Tech Tuesday just dedicated enough to get this thrown together on prom weekend. You should really appreciate that. I'm Liam Spore. Number five. Google is falling on some hard times with a once fabled phone to end all phones. Now, this wasn't really the phone to end all phones, but more like an HTC smartphone with Google slapped on the side. That didn't really help it kill the iPhone, needless to say. Compounding Google's issues was its choice to go T-Mobile exclusive, but only sell the actual handset online at their Google store. This plan hasn't gone over so well. So bad that they are now completely phasing out their online store in favor of retail stores. It may prove to be too little too late as Verizon and Sprint already chose to find other HTC Android phones to be their feature smartphones. Google does have a lot of cash to burn in their new adventures into markets like this, but it's another failed attempt at dismounting the iPhone dynasty. Come on Google, you own the internet. Like, get it together. Number four. Sony seemingly was giving up on its high-end photography and video share to Canon and Nikon, but that's all changing with the EX3s and EX5s. Due out in June for $550 or $700, they are said to be the smallest cameras with swappable lenses. Sony is putting the so far mostly uncommon micro four-thirds technology to good use with these super compact and super slim cameras that can then get any type of lens hooked up to the front. And amateur filmmakers don't start feeling left out, since Sony is using the same tech for a new HD camera set to come out in fall. It also gets the swappable lens feature, so you can get $30,000 camera features for under a grand. Still, I won't buy it until Aston Kutcher makes it look cool. Number three, what's akin? I'm not totally sure. I know at least it's Microsoft's latest attempt at diverting teenagers' attentions from any sort of classwork and direct human interaction in general. But is it a smart phone? No. Is it a dumb phone? No. Is it a smart dumb phone or a dumb smartphone? I think. But it has Facebook. That's all that really matters. MS put out the Kin 1, a palm pre looking slider, and the Kin 2, a standard rectangular messaging phone, as their new teenager social network crazed product. They are relatively cheap, $50 for the Kin 1 and $100 for the Kin 2, and do what teenagers apparently do all the time, update feeds, send texts, take blurry photos, and tweet. Surprisingly enough, they do a great job at that. However, that's all they seem to do. The Kin has no app store yet. One is apparently coming, but until then, users are lacking apps like a calendar and some other basics that would really easily be downloaded, except you can't download them. That sort of thing can be fixed if there is eventually an app store type thing. Where the Kin really is being killed is in the pricing. The phones are cheap, but the plans are not. Verizon and other carriers see the Kin as a smartphone and price it as such, charging you for data and text and minutes. Basically, you're paying for an iPhone or Droid service for a phone that can't do most of what iPhones and Droids need said service for. So why buy the Kin when you can get a Palm Pre or a Droid or an HTC, whatever, for a little more and pay the same monthly cost and get way more? Exactly, you wouldn't do that. Poor Kin, dead before its days. Now off to tweet, blog, and Facebook, and Flickr the info to the world. Except I don't have a Kin, oh no, how will the information be transmitted? Number two. Gamers out there who also like functional and intuitive OSs will be happy to know that Steam is now available for Macs. Steam is free and will work in happy harmony with your PC if you already have an account and downloads. Even better than this new way to get legit gaming on a Mac, Valve is offering Portal, one of the most addicting and clever games out there, totally free until May 24th. That means all you Mac heads should get out there and get it free while you can. Along with Portal, there is another 50-some games available, and Valve is promising to come out with at least one new game a week every Wednesday. Keep on the lookout for Left 4 Dead and maybe Team Fortress 2. Like I said before, gamers that already have games on their PC will be able to port them to their Mac for free, so you can play on any of your machines. Or play against yourself if you have no friends. And number one. If you Twitter, you know it's a big deal to have a high-level celeb decide you are cool enough to follow. It's a mark of awesomeness to know Andy Samberg may be reading what you had for breakfast. Well, because of some odd code in a little-known text entry system, anyone could get anyone to follow them. It's almost funny how simple it was. Typing in accept and then the username of the person would act as if they decided to follow you. The bug was tied to the text command feature on the Twitter that lets you type a command like stats or follow and then do something that is usually done by clicking a button. Somehow the ability to accept people as followers got thrown in there as a command which allowed a Turkish user to accidentally discover it and tell the interweb. Then Twitter went nuts and everyone started making everyone else follow them. For a few hours this went on before the guys at Twitter could shut it down. In the end, not a huge deal, privacy or security wise, as it only sends tweets to the forced followers and they can easily unfollow those who force them. However, it is very embarrassing to the otherwise privacy danger free site. Then again, I'd rather get random tweets than have random creeps knowing my personal info. Cough. Facebook. That's all for this week. Only a few episodes left until Tech Tuesday is over forever. So check out all of the past episodes on YouTube while playing nostalgic music.